Well, hey everyone, let's talk about addition and subtraction, or more specifically, if you're gonna be doing addition or subtraction, you're gonna get a number, and we need to talk about how to round that number correctly so that your rounded number properly reflects the amount of precision in your measurement. Because like I've said, this is the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Your answer is only as good as the quality of data that went in to produce it. So as we look at this addition and subtraction, both of these follow the same rules. And no matter whether you do addition or subtraction, as it says here, you've got to count decimal places to figure out how you're going to round your number. Because if you take a calculator and type these in, ignore these for just a moment, but I want to point out that if you type these into a calculator, you'll get a number. But if you just write this as your final answer, it's not acceptable because this does not reflect the accuracy of the data that was used to get this answer. So that's why you need a round. It reflects, the, the, your rounding is a reflection of the quality of your data. So the rules for how to do that, like it says here, count decimal places. You'll notice that what it's saying is this was measured accurate to the hundreds place, this was measured accurate to the tenths place, and this was measured accurate to the thousands place. Now clearly, that means this is very precise data, this is a lot less precise. So since your least accurate number only goes out to the tenths place, you need a round to the tenths place to reflect that level of accuracy. So that's what this is showing, rounding in a way that reflects the quality of your data. So how are you, the student, going to do this? There's a couple different ways to go about this. You can say, okay, hundreds place, tenths place, thousands place, this is the least accurate, so let's just round to the tenths place. But though that may work, the way we want you to show it to us on an exam is by doing this. So what happened here? Stack at the numbers so that all the decimals are in the same place, the whole number, the tenths place, the hundreds place, all in the same location. That way they're all directly on top of each other. Stack them up, put your multiple, or addition or subtraction sign here, and then write your raw calculator number. And then here's what you do. You need to identify which one is your least accurate number because that will determine where you round. And your least accurate number is determined like this. You look at the last significant figure in your numbers. The last significant figure is the one here on, at the end. This is the last sig fig, this is the last sig fig, and this is the last sig fig for your three numbers. Notice that this number has its last sig fig furthest to the left. Whichever last sig fig is furthest to the left, that is the one that is the least accurate number, and that is the one that determines where you round. So the one that's furthest to the left, we round there, and you draw this arrow straight through the numbers. I can do it with a marker here to get the same idea. You draw an arrow point through that, pointing where you're going to round for your final answer. And you'll notice that's why I rounded a 30.0, because we draw an arrow through there. It's pointing at the 0. The 0 is next to a 2, so we round down to leave it just at 0. All right, so that's the reason why that is what it is. And that's the process you'll want to go through for dealing with these sorts of numbers, or rather rounding off these sorts of numbers. So more examples that obviously you want to make sure you're getting these down too, um, include these. Now you notice, if you put these numbers into the calculator, you get the same answer for each. However, they are going to not be rounded the same because there is a difference between these. Notice that this one has a decimal point and this one does not. That means this one has a different number of significant figures than this one, which means you will round this differently compared to this one. Okay, so this is the big idea here is don't just write what comes out of your calculator. You need to round appropriately according to the quality of data you have. So with this, we look and say, all right, once again, let's underline our last significant figures. This is a significant figure because trailing zeros are significant when a decimal is present. This is a significant figure. This, on the other hand, no decimal means the trailing zeros don't count. This is your last sig fig, and this is your last sig fig here because it's a non-zero number. What that means is, okay, can you tell here 
Which number is your least accurate, by the way? Is it the top number or the bottom number? Answer that now. If you answer correctly, you said the top number is the least accurate. So it's going to determine that we round at this decimal place right here. Can you tell which number of these is the least accurate? Say now. If you're correct, you said the top number is least accurate because its last six figures furthest to the left. So we round here. Notice, because the last sig fig is different in each example, we round that number differently in each example. And that's the reason why, and I will uh, remove these. See, it's pointing out that decimal. And this is the reason why we round like this, because this is the last sig fig, so we round in this decimal location. This two is next to an eight, so it goes up to being a three. And 22,000 needs to remain in 22,000. So we just leave these as zeros with no decimal at the end. Okay, they turn into a zero when you round it. So 22,288 just becomes 22,300. These numbers have to maintain their same value. Here, because we're rounding in this location, that arrow is pointing to this final eight at the end, this eight is next to a one, so it does not round up, it stays as an eight. That's why it's just 22,288, and because it's the last digit before the decimal, we just leave it like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there we go. That's how you round those ones. So we need to do some more practice with this idea. Okay, again, it doesn't matter addition, subtraction. They both follow the same rules. However, make sure you don't attempt to use this multiplication division that has its own rule to be covered later. Um, so consider these right here. Each of these needs to be rounded. All you're looking at here is the raw calculator output. You need to round these appropriately in order to reflect the quality of the data that went in. So you've got to go through the same thing. And that's the answer, but how do we get that? I will write it here. You have to once again go through 36.475, line them up, 54.01, and then 90.485. Notice how I'm lining up the decimals. Those, that's addition. Oops, sorry, I totally messed that up. I didn't realize. That adds up to 90.485. I don't know how I misread that, thought I was adding them up. But anyway, point is, we recognize last sig fig here, last sig fig here. The one furthest to the left determines where we round. So we round right here at this number eight. The eight is next to a five, so it goes up to become 90.49. And that's why the final answer is what it was right there. So you should be able to come up with how to round the rest of these also. But let's just do a couple more just so people can see um, for these ones right here. All right, so same thing, one, two, three, four zeros, and then seven, six, so it's 0 0.1, two, three, four zeros, and then a seven, six, and then 0 0.004, and then let's see, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros, and a one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros, and a one. You add all those up and it becomes 0 0.004 We're going to do the same thing again. So you should be able to tell right now which one of these numbers is the least accurate and therefore determines the way around. Go ahead and do that now. And if you chose correctly, you chose this number because last sig fig, last sig fig, last sig fig. So you will round at this location. So we draw the arrow. The arrow is pointing at that four right there. And for that reason, we write that number. Oh, wait, why does that turn to that? Because remember, any number smaller than 0.1, you have to write using scientific notation or greater than or equal to 1,000 must also be written using scientific notation. So. 0 0.004 is that number right there. Why? Because one, two, three, you gotta move the decimal three times to turn it into a four. So that's why it's four times 10 to the negative third. And because we're rounding it here, nothing comes afterward. That's why it's not 4.0 or something like that. Oh, and of course we should always box our final answer as there. All right, but that's the reason why it is what it is. Now, 
as you guys do this, first of all, questions should be answered. Look closely at these numbers. You should be able to see whether or not they are the same because they do get the same calculator answer. But are these numbers the same? Answer no. Yes or no? Actually, I should rephrase that. Will they be rounded the same? Answer yes or no. All right, hopefully you responded no. These will not be rounded the same because these numbers are not the same. Notice this one has a decimal point, this one doesn't. They are not, therefore, the same number. Right? This one has more certainty than this one, which means you're going to round differently for this number than for this number. So for both of them, you write them by, you stack them up, 540,000 and 846.51, so 846.51. See, I've got the same value, the whole number, whole number, 10, 10, 100, 100, tenths, hundredths. I've got them lined up so that the numbers of the same value are directly underneath each other. Oops, that's a minus. And then the calculator output is 539, uh, 153.49. So for each of these, let's look at what it's going to be. First of all, um, I suppose we can do the top one. So I'll put the little decimal right there. So right now, you should be able to tell uh, which number is going to be the last significant figure for the top number. Go ahead and do that now. All right, hopefully you chose this zero and not the four or one of the other zeros. Bear in mind, if not for the decimal, the last sig fig would be this four over here rather than one of the zeros. But for this one, the decimal is present, so there it is, the decimal is present. Uh, the thing is, the last sig fig for this number is here, which means we're gonna draw our arrow right here, which means your rounded number becomes 539, one, 50, oh, this three's next to four, so three, like that. Now, it's written like that because one, two, three, four, five, so 5.39153 times 10 to the fifth. You gotta move the decimal five times in order for it to turn into this, which is why it's 10 to the fifth power. Because you got any number greater than 1,000 or equal to 1,000, you've got to use scientific notation. Now. I mentioned earlier, if not for that decimal place, I'm going to move all of these to get it back uh, cleaned up and whatever. If not for that decimal place, you consider it differently. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. Because uh, now your last sig fig is here, which means you're going to round between these two. This is the least accurate number because it's furthest to the left, so you draw your arrow here. And what do you round that to? That 3 is next to a 9, so it becomes 540,000. So remember, you got to keep the same values for your numbers. 500,000, 500,000, 30,000, 40,000. Okay, you keep the same value. But you're rounding here, so 540,000, no decimal means these are not significant figures. I know there's decimal here, but you don't bring it over because you round it here. And when you round here, there's no decimal points afterward. So anyway, um, that's why it becomes 5.4 times 10 to the fifth power, as shown here. So 540,000 minus this just becomes 540,000 yet, because what we're saying is we're really uncertain about how big this number is. It's basically 540,000 plus or minus 10,000 compared to that 846 really isn't anything. So that's the reason why um, it doesn't cause a significant difference in it. So uh, always box your hands, of course. Now that said, there's one other thing, speaking of scientific notation, if you're going to be doing this, sometimes we will give you numbers in scientific notation. And the question becomes, how do you deal with that? Because, as you notice, these can be, these can be very different numbers. This is 3,010. This is 10,200. And that means if you just add these together, 3.01 plus 1.02, you're going to get something totally different from what you would get from 3,010 plus 10,200. So the first thing you got to do with these, if you get scientific notation, is you got to remember 
we don't even know how to round it until you line those decimal places up and see where your last sig fig is and which numbers are your least accurate. So you gotta do the same thing. You gotta convert these to regular numbers. The calculator can do that if you're not sure how to do that off the top of your head, so it's fine. Um, once you've done that, use your calculator, turn this into this, this into this. Because after all, in case you forgot, as a quick little reminder, 3.01 to the third, that's 1, 2, 3, 3,010, or 10. 1.02, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 10,200, okay? But regardless, you calculate it and do that. Once you've done that, you can simply stack these numbers up. I believe I have that animated, yes I do, right here. So we stack them up, it's like 1,000, 1,000, 100, 100, 10, 10, whole number, whole number, 10,000th place. And what that happens is we get them lined up like this. Your last significant figure here, Actually, you, the viewer, should be able to tell me which number is your last sig fig in this number. Tell me now. If you're correct, you chose this number, the one. How about here? You should be able to tell me which sig fig is the last one here. Tell me now. If you're correct, you told me the two. So we draw an arrow right here because this is the least accurate because the last sig fig is first to left, which means we round it right here, which means we round it to 13,200. And since that number is greater than or equal to 1,000, you convert to scientific notation, which is what that's all about. Uh, technically, you should box your answers. But uh, that's, so that's how we got there. Okay, it's because we stack the number, convert to regular numbers, stack them, figure out around, and then if necessary, turn it back to scientific notation. Of course, as a reminder, you can always use scientific notation. You'll never lose points in our test for using scientific notation, but you are potentially looking at losing points if you don't use it. So if you want to be safe, use scientific notation for everything. You'll, it's, Assuming it's done right, it's impossible to lose points for it. All right, so let's get this out of the way. Let's look at some more examples. Other examples go in the same kind of way. So by the way, that was positive exponent, meaning big number. Notice negative exponent, small number. doesn't matter. You want to figure out how to round? Turn into a regular number. Figure out what the answer would be. And then stack them so that you can identify your last significant figure here and here, and that's why you drew an arrow here to round right here to 0 0.0652, which turns into that scientific notation that, of course, always box your answer. All right, so that's why we do that. Finally, this one. One thing to notice, by the way, you don't necessarily have to put scientific notation when you write these out, but, or sorry, I don't know why I said scientific notation. You don't have to put parentheses necessarily, but why do we do it? Because if you don't, you're probably gonna get this wrong. Order of operations, my friends. So if you type this without parentheses in your calculator, you're gonna get 10 to the fifth power minus 7.53. So you're gonna get 10 to the negative two points or one point something, whatever, it's going to be a mess and it's going to be wrong. So always put scientific or parentheses around your scientific notation when calculating these on your calculator. So we put this here as a reminder to you for that. Anyway, convert it to a regular number, do the math, stack them, and you get this because last sig fig, last sig fig, round here. 944,120, because you're going to round this up to a 2 since it's next to this. So that's what this came from. And then convert to scientific notation. Remember, don't include that 0 because there's no decimal in this original number. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's how I go about doing that. And that would be your overview of the rules.